All right, everybody, we're going to be making a quick video. I'm hoping to kind of speed run this so it doesn't take too much of your time. Uh, this is going to be using the Infinite Spartans blend that Seresia worked on putting together. Uh, he organized all the armors uh, and applied materials, textures, got it all sorted out, and used the average Goblin Enthusiast's uh, blender shader, which took him a very long time. Props to both those guys for suffering through that so that other people can have an easier time. So you're going to go open the file, um, and you're going to notice a few things in regards to uh, things already, you know, textures aren't showing up. Um, and this tutorial will hopefully be more focused towards those who've just never used Blender or have no idea how to get started. You know, like you're trying to do a cosplay, you kind of do 3D modeling or put them in the art scene or whatever. Uh, you want to get started quick without watching a donut tutorial or all those other tutorials. Uh, so let's see here, you'll notice that there's no textures applied. Generally, if it's not bright pink, it's because you just haven't turned it on. There are four circles up top. One is wireframe. One is one without textures applied to save on memory. One is with textures applied. And you'll see it takes a little bit longer because there are a lot of them, a lot of materials. And then there's render mode. So it'll do a kind of like a fake render pass to show you what it looks like. Um, so we'll start in the texture mode here. So first we're going to choose what our character looks like. Uh, we're going to go you'll see here there's the different cores on the right side we got the mark 7 gen 3 well I don't want to use that right now we'll uncheck these checkboxes to save us some resources uh, and you'll notice here there's a rig we're gonna be kind of avoiding that because it's, it's currently pretty broken uh, I don't want to focus on something that's gonna waste your time so we're gonna turn that off all right so let's see here uh, let's focus on Rakshasha I guess so we'll click the checkbox here We'll get started on some Rakshasha. Rakshasha. Rakshasa. There we go. I'll just say that wrong. Um, basic blender controls. You got an orthographic orbit thing here. You can click and hold. You can kind of rotate around. I'll do this while we're loading here. You got a pan tool. So you can move these around a little bit. Um, you can use your mouse wheel to zoom in. You can zoom out. You can also click and hold the mouse button to do the same thing with the orthographic view. Uh, we got the uh, rotate tool. You click an object. Oh, it's also over there. Oh, it's not good. Pretend we didn't do that. I'll show you how to do some of that stuff later. Um, I think attachments are a little bit different. Sometimes they're mounted differently. Um, there's a move tool, rotate tool, and a scaling tool. If for whatever reason you want a big camera, you can press S on the keyboard, shrink it, move it by moving your mouse. Um, if you want better camera control, you can press shift and the tilde button, which is above your tab key. And then you can move with the camera using your mouse. And then WASD is how you kind of move around. So you kind of use them in tandem to be like, oh, I want to see what that is. Or, oh, I want to see his you know, belt. I want to see the bumps on his belt. You know, you kind of get a little up close and personal and see how things look. Maybe you're doing cosplay or something for reference. Um, other than that, um, there is... Let's start on some customizing. So we'll open up the Rakshasa core, right? We'll check out some helmets. Uh -huh. I won't focus too much on the other helmets a whole lot. But let's say, you know, you, you're not a fan of the Rakshasa helmet. I don't know why you would be. It's pretty cool. Uh, but let's say you want the Mark V B helmet instead, right? You'll go to the Mark V core, the Mark V B helmets. Let's say I want the CQB helmet on top. We'll hit the checkbox. Boom. It's on there. Use this rotate, check it out. Okay, let's say you uh, let's say you want the shoulder piece, right? It's like, man, I like that shoulder piece, but I kind of wish it was a different shoulder piece. Well, let's say you go marks, mark seven. Let's see here, shoulder pads. That'll be his left shoulder pad. Let's just pick a random one. Let's get camera. Oh wait, oh we gotta hide it. Hold on, hold on here. Shoulder pad, shoulder pad left. We're gonna hide it. Okay, pretend it wasn't there. All right. Okay, we're in the shoulder pads here. Let's pick a cool one. No. No, no, no. Let's pick one. It's big. It's a statement. Come on, baby. That's fine. Sure. Um so you can kinda you can kinda just click and hide stuff if you like. Um, Let's say about that. 
minus all that stuff. And then we want like, uh, oh, dude, I like the Yoroi uh, swords. I want the swords. So we'll go to the hip attachment. We'll find the first principal blades. Check those on. Boom. You got the blades on. You got a rock sauce core. You got a Mark 7 shoulder piece. You got a Mark 5B helmet. All right. So you kind of mix and match what you want. Get your guy fucking kitted out. Um, next is colors. Okay. So you'll go to the shading tab at the top. So we kind of go to a different view. Hit control tilde. Kind of focus on the spot you want to look at. All right. So you see this Mark 5 or Mark 5B helmet. CQB here. We're going to go at the top. And uh, in here, you can use your scroll. For those of you on the laptop, like I had a suffer on for a while, but if you have a mouse, you can click and hold the center scroll wheel, drag it around, you can move it. Um, and if for some reason I, uh, you get off center, you can't you can't find your node trees and stuff. You can hit the A key on the keyboard and then hit the period on the number pad, and it'll bring it right front and center. Um, first things first, we'll check that we have this object selected. So we'll go to the bottom right, we'll find this red circle. We're currently selecting the visor right now. So we're going to focus on the visor. And usually everything that's a big difference in color will be the middle zone. So we'll hit that. Say, oh, I want uh, scuffs. I want the white scuffs on there. He's been through some stuff. And we'll kind of play around until we find the zone we want to change. So now we found the actual visor color. I want blood red. You make it brighter. Make it darker, make it kind of bright. And if you want, you can change the metallic value, go down, make it like a plastic kind of look in the middle. You can also hold shift while you're dragging, make it go slower, so it better fine tunes your stuff. Um, edge wear, uh, sometimes it doesn't do anything depending on what you're working on. Um, so once you're done with your, uh, your helmet there, we'll give it a little bit lighter of a scuff. I'll select the helmet texture. All right, so we've got blue. Now for the armors, usually the bottom colors in the zones are the main bits of color. All right, so we'll go. Let's go with white. Let's go with white everything. Change the saturation. All right, there he is. All right, now you'll see these other zones. Zone two. Okay. Zone two. Oh, I guess I should touch on this too. Top. There's there's things like grime and dust and dirt and, and scuffs. Um, sometimes they show up. Sometimes they don't. Depending on what zone you're looking at. Um, so let's say zone two. We'll find out what zone two is. Oh, it's this part right here, it looks like. So we'll make that bright. Let's say we want this to be like yellow. Ah, it looks really ugly. Let's just go all white. Let's go all white. There we go. Let's say we want this strip here to be red, though. Well, we got to find out what strip that is, so where that color is located. Oh, this is his chin, apparently. Sure, we can we can make that look terrible. Uh, make it more italic to give it a darker look, kind of shinier look. We can make this brighter. We found the red. Make it metallic. All right, we got a dude like that. And same with the chest, you know. Hit shift to tilde. Go here. Here's the chest piece. All right, these are the main colors. Zone one are like the big statement colors of the piece. So I want this to be red. Right, and then uh, the rest of this is kind of like his uh, his leather, you know, his armor. So he's a big uh, well, white. I'm not entirely sure where where that's getting changed at. I think it's back here actually. Yeah, it's that neck zone, kind of the lower torso area. You'll see, um, and you can kind of just I believe this is still wear and tear. Yeah, it's like uh, scratches. So let's see, we'll make it all white. Make it white. White tech suit, white straps. Ah, those actually look not very good. Let's change those. Look, yeah, sure. So let's pretend that looks good. All right, you can do that with the pretty much anything: the swords, the shoulders, the hands, the attachments, everything. Um, once you're satisfied with how your guide looks and how it's colored, uh, we'll focus on cameras. So we'll click the uh, camera button, and uh, we should probably go to layout for this. Have more of a viewport. Click camera button, and uh, I think default is down, set to down here. Okay, you can hit render, render image. Depending on your graphics card, it'll do it either quickly or slowly. It'll tell you how much time's remaining. Mine's done already, but you can see it's really low, low quality because we have it set to different settings. Um, so at the top here, 
We have it set as cycles, which is good for like uh, realistic lighting um, and getting really nitty gritty, but it will uh, take a lot more of your graphics card power to do it. Uh, make sure your device is set to GPU complete. You will see options like denoise, which there's some pixels showing up. Denoise will help with that. You can uh, change the noise threshold to be super small to make it not pixely at all. You can also increase the crazy amount of samples in the viewport. Um, but this is if you want your viewport, like this one, to be rendered really crazy and nice looking. You can increase all this. Um, but we're not wanting to do viewport. We want to do render. So we'll turn on denoise in the render tab. Open image denoise is a lot more accurate. I found optics is just kind of fast, fast and sloppy. Um, accurate to make it look better. Max samples, it's not going to be very, you know, very accurate. But let's say if we dump it up to 2000, we'll drop the uh, noise threshold to 0 0.005. 0 0.005, there we go. Okay. And then we got the uh, output properties. We could either make it 1080, 1080p. We can change it to 4000 if we want to. That'll take a lot longer to render. You can change your animation frames or whatever you're doing. Uh, you can change the output format, where they're going, if it's transparent background or not. Uh, there is a way to enable the background to be transparent. I don't remember how to do that, but it's fine. It's good for like Discord backgrounds. Um, that's just fine. Uh, anyway, so we'll focus on that. We'll hit F12 now. We've changed some settings, and you should see a difference in render time. It'll take a little extra. It took an extra minute, it says. But you'll also notice we can zoom in a little extra too. It's still kind of working out. Some of these kinks are a little little fuzzy. Um, so hopefully the denoiser will take care of some of that. And if it doesn't, you can bump those numbers we pointed out earlier. You can bump those up. And it should change that. But you'll notice it's looking a lot better already. It's got 20 seconds left. Let's go try to fuzz out some of that. So that's how you do kind of cool renders really quick. Uh, camera controls, same as we're looking around the viewport. You can hit shift, tilde. You can move it around. You'll notice it's kind of fuzzy because I'm in real rendering mode. If I wanted to just turn it off, I can move around a lot quicker. It loads a lot faster. Just want my dude in here. Maybe I just want to. Maybe I just want a close up of his, you know, his body. Hit F12. It'll also go to render mode. Take a second. Boom. Got that left. And you can kind of see it going. I won't let it render all the way, but you'll see how you can kind of just move your camera around. Um, other than camera, what's important to know is lights. If you want to have, you know, lights fixated on people, um, I find it really helpful. I'm going to add lights. There's point light, which is kind of like a little ball of light, which you can kind of see here. If I get close, you can kind of see the light being transferred on him. It's going on his face, his side. It kind of just goes 360 degrees everywhere. If you want to change the settings for the lights, once you have it selected, down here in the bottom right, you'll see a green light bulb. You can change the color. You can make it red, yellow, green, any color you want. Make it like a sun. You can make it yellow, but turn down saturation. Make it like a yellow sunlight kind of look. But you don't want it to be an actual sunlight. You want to make it like a fake sun. And then you can increase the strength of the light. You can increase the radius so it's more spread out, or you can make it more fine-tuned and more powerful, more sharp. We'll hit F12 on them. Now you can see the light kind of in action. It's casting shadows. It's going to increase your render time a little bit, but it'll also look pretty cool. Um, so besides that kind of light, we have sunlight, which is way brighter. You can move it up here. You can grab the little yellow ball, point it at certain spots, point it at his feet his face. Um, you can also change the strength of the sun as well. You can change the angle of it. You can move around a little bit, move him to the side, show it his front so he's all lit up. You know, or you want to get a little artsy. You can have him you know, backlit if you want. A little side angle. Um, so those are really bright. You can point them and it kind of lights everything but primarily where it's pointing at. So it's kind of like a, a point and a spotlight. Spotlights um, you can also kind of direct where you want them to be. But they're not as powerful unless you kind of jack it up and you move them in the right spot. So you'll notice it's not, it's kind of in the zone still. But actually, he's not. I'm lying. There we go. Um, and you can actually go down here, 
turn on show cone, and it'll show you what parts of the object are getting blasted by light. Um, so if I want it just on his head, do that, and I can even get this little thing here, I can make it big, or focus it really small, a little spotlight or something on him. Um, and I can jack up the power to like 10,000 or something ridiculous, like a god ray or something. Hit render. It would probably look really stupid, but there we go. So you can see you just mess with lights that way. Um, area lights, they're also extremely bright. Um, you can either make it, uh, they're more of like a, a, a space you can do it. You can make, it's kind of like a sun, but flat. So if you want to like make it big, press S, make a big, big area light. You can still point it at places. Pointing it aside, jack up the numbers here, so it works kind of like that. Um, and you can increase the size too that this way. So the short, the smaller it is, the more concentrated this power is. But if you make it bigger, this power is spread out and makes a little bit of a lighter amount of light. Uh, let's say you're done rendering, right? You want to go to render, render image. Let's say for some reason you really like how this looks. Okay, it looks awful. But let's say, you know, oh, I don't want to wait the 2,000 samples while it denoises and stuff. You can hit escape. It'll stop it. It'll save it as it is. Just pretend like you did render it all the way. Go to image, save as, name it whatever you want. You can even change the color depth and compression, make it you know, smaller in size. You can save it, and it'll save to where you want. Um, I believe that is just about everything. Um, Besides appending objects, like if you have like a gun, you know, you want to append a, a gun to your scene. You can go to where you have them, or the blend. Let's say I want the, uh, let's say I want the spanker. Uh, there it is. I'll import the blend file. <laughs> blend file is really small. Um, I'll point at the rig of the object. Press S to make it either big or small. Here. That looks about right. Sure. Why not? Alright, and then if you want to like render your oh, let's get rid of that point light here. There we go. Let's say you really like how this this looks. So just change your camera again. Render it one more time. And it'll start to do its thing. Uh, so that's basically the, ba the basics of Blender. Um, I'll cut it short because uh, I really don't want to waste your time. Hopefully that helps some of you who are kind of new to Blender and it's kind of overwhelming. Um, but really, I, I really hope it helps with your uh, your projects. So I'll see you later.